Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America once again and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good few times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, some really interesting things as well, but the one that we're going to have a look at today is a style that I've wanted to try from them for quite a little while, so I'm glad that we finally got one of these to take a look at on the channel today. So hopefully it's an interesting beer and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So um, yeah, like I said, for this review, we are going to head over to America once again. We're going to go to the state of California on the west coast, the city of San Diego in the southwest of the country, and the district of Point Loma to be utterly specific. So we're going to have a look at yet another beer from Modern Times Beer. This one is called Black House. It comes in at 5.8% ABV, and this one is a coffee stout. So some of you might know already that one of the really unique points about this brewery is that they're one of the few in the world who roast their own coffee beans and they're actually well known for their coffee stouts these days. The last beer that we had from this brewery was a coffee IPA, was it um, Dragons and Gargoyles or something it was called? And it was brewed in collaboration with Stone Brewing actually and that was a beautiful, beautiful beer. But I'm curious to see how one of their kind of straight up coffee stouts turn out. If you've been watching the channel for a while you will probably know that I got into coffee stouts on the back of some of the imperial coffee stouts I had from Doogie's Brewery in Gothenburg here in Sweden. So uh, yeah it's a style that I always kind of keep an eye out for these days. But yeah definitely nice to finally get a hold of one of the coffee stouts from modern times. I've heard very good things about these and like I said earlier hopefully it's good and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So um, yeah we got this beer here in Sweden as part of the Tivfelid temporary sortiment and that was released I want to say on this one was released I want to say on the 20th of April 2021 through System Bolaga over here in Sweden but uh, yeah let's crack on with this one then so as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Modern Times Beer before and you will no doubt see more added to that list at some point in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefetch or whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the american beers that i've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever i get the opportunity not as much as i would like right enough but we'll see about changing that in the future but as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Modern Times Beer then, on to my brewery notes. So, Modern Times Beer, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in the Point Loma district of San Diego over in California on the west coast of the United States. And the brewery was founded back in 2013 by Jacob McKean, who was a beer geek home brewer and a former stone brewing employee as well. But they brewed their first batch of beer on the 18th of May 2013, and they had their first beers on tap in their tasting room on the 9th of August before they had their full grand opening on the 1st of September that year. But the brewery originally originally started to operate on a 30 BBL system and today their beers are very widely distributed throughout Southern California and I think they're going all across the states these days actually. This is a very very well respected brewery these days. Um, but the brewery is named after the Utopian community that was founded back in 1850 and most of their beers are named after Utopian ideas or mythological utopias in fact. But apparently the modern times colony people lived with bartering without the restriction of marriage and they experimented with a less kind of exploitative and more pleasurable world if you like. But today the modern times colony if you like is in Brentwood on Long Island over in New York State and uh, Jacob apparently has been always has always been very keen on these little kind of unknown pockets of history and so he decided that he was going to name his brewery after one which I think is pretty cool actually um, but they've got two tap rooms in San Diego they've got a brewery and restaurant in Los Angeles one in Encinitas if I'm pronouncing that correctly and then they've got another brewery and restaurant in Portland up in Oregon as well and a restaurant in Santa Barbara too so they've got quite a few different locations these days. Uh, as I said earlier one of the big unique points about this brewery is that they've been roasting their own coffee beans as well and as a result of that they produce a lot of different coffee stouts in fact as well as doing some just awesome straight up coffee actually from what I gather but um, yeah a very active brewery doing lots of different things known for their IPAs actually as well 
which uh, have been very nice. I've had a couple of IPAs from these guys. As I say, I've been wanting to try one of these coffee stouts for quite a while, in fact. It's, all, it's been mainly IPAs that I've had from this brewery so far. Um, but as of April 2021, when I'm reviewing this beer for you, uh, they've, they're still running their 30 BBL production kit and they've produced over 1,450 beers from what I understand. But yeah, we get beers from these guys regularly over here in Sweden. You seem to get something from them every kind of month or two which is always interesting and they seem to be a very prolific brewery also which is great but um yeah that's all i can really tell you about these guys for the moment if you want to learn more about this brewery you can of course check out the brewery website you can follow them on facebook and instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the rate beer beer advocate and on tap pages to learn more about all those different beers that they've done so um yeah that is it for your brewery history section in this video let's crack on and have a little taste of the beer then so, yes, a bit of out of breath after that, actually. But yeah, as you can see, this one is a one American pint can. Oh, <laughs> that nearly went very wrong there, didn't it? But yeah, um, this one is a one American pint can, so 473 milliliters in real people measurements. I never understand this whole thing in America about fluid ounces and all that rubbish. Just use milliliters, man, it's so much easier. But um, yeah, it tells you a little bit about the beer on the back here. So it says, it's great that you like coffee. I just love that about you. Speaking of which, you're holding an oatmeal coffee stout, posi positively redolent with coffee aroma and flavor. It kind of tastes like a chocolate covered espresso being only drier and more like beer. Nifty fact, we are one of the only breweries in the world to roast our own coffee, which allows us to be extremely persnickety about which beans we buy and how we roast them. Taste the persnicketiness. So yeah, I like that. But it tells you all about the, uh, the malt bill in this one. So two row, kiln coffee, Munich flaked barley, pale chocolate, roasted barley, crystal 60, midnight wheat and oats. So that's a pretty interesting malt base in this one. It says it's 75% Ethiopian coffee and 25% Sumatran. So Sumatra, Indonesia, of course. But um, yeah, as I've told you in, in previous videos, I actually don't drink coffee, but for some reason, I really love coffee stouts. They're one of my favorite adjuncts to put in beer. And I think the main reason for that is just that they're so diverse. You know, if you grow coffee in different parts of the world, you've got different soil compositions, you've got different water compositions as well. So it can really affect the, uh, the flavor of these coffee beans. But from what I gather with coffee, it's all about the, the mazel, the MASL, the meters above sea level. The higher that you grow the coffee bean, the higher altitude at which you grow it, the more likely you are to get all these kind of citrusy, floral and kind of fruity flavours out of coffee beans actually. And it's uh, it's really interesting, you know, coffee beans are very much as, um, as kind of diverse as hops are potentially. So yeah, coffee stouts are a very, very interesting sort of little niche of brewing if you like. But um, yeah. That aside, I think this one will be pretty good. But I think I paid about 50 Swedish kroners for this one. So that's about five euros for the can. Uh, as I always tell you, when it comes to System Bolaga, you'll pay an extra 10 kroners for any imported beer because the import company has to get a slice of the action and so on. But yeah, about 50 kroners. So that's about um, four pounds 50 sterling, five euros, and then maybe about six dollars American with the exchange rate these days so um yeah not too bad not too bad but yeah 5.8 percent or this one one of the lower alcohol coffee stouts that we've had on the channel here but nothing wrong with that yeah the black house stout at um 5.8 percent ABV you can see the artwork on this one is pretty similar to what we've had from um, modern times before usually it's just different colors of rings and writing and stuff like that that you get on these but yeah let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then very curious about this mm -hmm. there we are so let's get this beer out and into the glass yeah That looks very nice, actually. This is definitely one of the tap rooms that I want to um, go and take a look at at some stage. Yeah, I don't know why they put the import sticker this high. They should have put it further down there so it didn't ruin the aesthetic of the, the thing for the video. Let me just put a wee bottle cap under there so that this actually stands at a nice angle. Just notice that. There we are, you can actually see the can without the, the camera reflecting now. But yeah, there you go. So before the head disappears, you can see that this beer poured with about a half finger of a frothy, I would say a light beige, kind of slightly almost fawny 
colour here on this one. It's maybe a bit too dark to be funny right enough. But that's fading away to just be a very, very thin foamy layer now. But it will no doubt leave a nice ring around the edge of the glass. But um, yeah, in terms of colour, it's a lovely sort of dark ebony kind of rosewood colour beer, this one. If we shine the light through it, it actually... Um, it's interesting because it's not um, hazy actually when it's an oatmeal stout I would have expected it to be kind of hazy to be honest but when you shine the light through this it's actually got a lovely kind of clarity to it it's got um, that kind of dark ruby sort of chestnutty mahogany type colour to it which is very interesting I can certainly appreciate that about this beer for sure very very nice so um, yeah Interesting. But as I say, that might well be due to the, the alcohol content in this one as well, being only 5.8%. Uh, the, the coffee stouts that we get over here in Sweden tend to be, they tend to do, the, they always tend to do coffee stouts as imperial stouts rather than lower alcohol ones here. I'm not sure if that is just a whole kind of bang for your buck thing. I think there's tax reasons and stuff here in Sweden for doing, uh, doing the beers like that. But um, yeah, they love their imperial stouts here rather than uh, the lighter stouts like this. You don't find too many light stouts like this in, um, in Scandinavia. In fact, it is all about, when it comes to the dark beers like that, it's all about the Imperials, absolutely. But yeah, in terms of a stout, this one, nothing really surprising about the appearance. Nothing at all, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, certainly looks the part of a nice coffee stout. Let's have a closer look at the aroma of this one then and just see how we get on. Very curious about this beer. That smells very nice actually. This is one of the things, this is one of my favourite points about coffee stouts is you just, you get so much just from the coffee bean itself. But yeah, um, this one's interesting. The backbone of this beer, you can smell a little bit of a kind of brown bread crusty thing, that forms the backbone of the beer. You're getting a nice kind of smooth brown bready quality just uh, sitting on top of that too, which I think is, is really great actually. So yeah. Um, yeah, the, the aroma of this beer is lovely. Sitting on top of that bread, that's where you get the coffee coming out of this one as well. But what's really interesting about this is that the coffee almost comes across as a little bit more like a subtlety rather than taking the lead in the beer. Um, so that's, that's definitely interesting because quite often in the, the Scandinavian uh, coffee stouts, the coffee really dominates actually. They seem to blast these things with coffee in a sense. I do like that. That's, I have to admit, I really do like that. But to have one that's a bit more of a kind of blend, if you like, that's going to be an interesting change of pace for me. So I'm curious to see how this translates into the flavour. But let's focus on the specific aroma of the coffee bean in this one. So what I'm getting out of this coffee bean is it, it's a very smooth roast. There's definitely a little bit of earthiness to it. I'm getting a wee bit of a... I kinda, there's a slight floral character to it. I don't really get citrus out of this one right enough, but there is a wee touch of a, a kind of red fruity element to it. So yeah, smooth roast, fairly earthy, wee bit, um, a wee bit floral, no real citrus, and a wee touch of a kind of a very slight red fruity sort of thing, like an almost figgy element. And it's interesting because you can smell, as I say, the coffee bean comes across as if it's infused in the middle of the, the bready elements in this beer. So yeah. That's definitely interesting. Uh, the more that you smell of this one too, the more that you smell of this one as well, you have a little bit more of a... Um, the more that you smell of this one too, the more that you have... Um, how would you say? Um, you get a little bit more sweetness out of it. There's definitely a bit of a sweet caramel to this one. There's some nice kind of, the, the sweeter caramel is interesting too because it develops to be more kind of roasty and toasty a little bit later on. And there's definitely some sort of McVitie's digestive biscuity kind of elements coming out of the beer too. Um, there are one or two chocolatey components to the beer. And in terms of chocolate, I would say it comes across as kind of milky in a sense, which I... Uh, which I really like, but um, yeah, it's this is this is really kind of quirky beer actually. I really like how everything just pieces together in this one. So um, yeah, mm. yeah. I think this I think this beer really has um, some interest. It really has some very interesting. Uh, just some really interesting kind of subtleties to it. As I say, there's one or two little woody undertones, I think, come out of the beer a little bit later on. There's a wee touch of nuttiness in there as well. But yeah, um, bread crusty base, 
brown bready elements on top of that. You've got those coffee bean notes kind of infused into that too. And as I say, earthy, slightly floral, a little bit of red fruit, slow roast. Absolutely, a bit of brown sugar sitting on top of that. Some nice chocolatey elements too. And um, yeah, the, um, the aromas out of this beer uh, do come across very, very nicely. So um, yeah, interesting for sure. Interesting on the aroma side of things. Um, yeah, on the hoppy side of the beer then, I think we've covered the malty elements quite nicely, but on the hoppy side of the beer, um, it comes across um, fairly straightforward in a sense, actually. There's a little bit of earthiness in there. You can smell some nice bright floral character, a little bit of a lighter grassiness too. And um, yeah, it works. It absolutely works. Um, yeah, the aroma out of this beer, I think, goes together very, very nicely. Um, yeah, there's not much else we can kind of say about that, to be honest. The it's the, the, hoppy, char the hoppy character for me comes across as quite subtle in a lot of ways. It's probably a little bit of summit or something like that that's in here. Um, but yeah, the green component really takes a bit of a back seat, to be honest with you. But then, yes, yeah, stouts are always a little bit more malty, so that would make sense. Um, but uh, yeah, on the fruity side of things, it's kind of what you would expect too. I mean, there's a wee touch of a kind of juicy raisiny and plummy element to it. You've got a bit of fig and I think the fig is the most kind of dominant uh, component in this one. And a wee bit of an almost kind of black currant element to it as well. I think we'll get more fruit out of the, the flavour than the aroma right enough. But it's definitely worth kind of considering that. And um, it is definitely worth considering that. And just, uh, and just enjoying it. Absolutely. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for the uh, for the aroma then. Definitely take a bit of time to ponder over the aroma of this beer before you get stuck into it. That's always half the experience with uh, craft beers and whiskies and sakes and things like that, as I always say. But um, yeah, let's have a go at this one then and see how we get on. So this is the Black House a Coffee Stout, 75% Ethiopian, 25% Sumatran coffee from Modern Times Beer in Point Loma in San Diego in California over on the west coast of the, of the United States. Very curious to see what this one has in store for us, so let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull, cheers, and finally nice to try one of these modern times in, uh, kind of coffee stouts. Let's go for it. Yeah. That is very nice, actually. Um, yeah, and as I was kind of thinking from the aroma, first impression of this beer is that it's actually, it, to me, it feels quite strange to have coffee in a stout that's as kind of light as this. But I think in, in Scandinavia, you know, we're quite spoiled in a sense. I'm yet to find imperial stouts anywhere in the world that are as thick as, you know, the Swedish, Norwegian, Danish ones that we have. I, you know, I, I, I think we're very, you know, that's one of the things in Scandinavia, the, the imperial stouts. I think there should be a sort of subcategory of Scandinavian imperial stouts because the thickness you get from these beers is unreal. When I try a lot of these big imperial stouts from the States, I always find them very light in the mouthfeel. But um, yeah, it's, it's strange coming to this one for me and having a stout that feels so light and drinkable with this coffee though in it. That for me is really um, unusual in a sense, but you, you know, you can kind of, um, in a lot of ways you can kind of understand it because um, it's, um, it's, you know, in America, it's, it's a hotter country, it's very humid over there. Um, I've been to California when I was very young, I don't remember it so much actually, but you know, it in a lot of ways it makes, um, it makes sense. makes sense to have kind of light drinkable darker beers like this I mean this I don't know if you could argue that in some ways this is like the the American equivalent of like a German Schwarz beer or a Czech Tmavi in a sense you know something that's that's dark and malty but also um, has a good bit of drinkability behind it but I certainly like it I could grow to appreciate this I think if I lived in a hotter place I'd be curious to try some of the Spanish and Italian um, kind of lower alcohol stouts actually I don't know how common those are in Italy they brew a lot of sour beers actually but in Spain they do a lot of IPAs um, Greece 
Mm. They've got a whole mix. They've got a whole mix of different things. Come to think of it, but um, yeah, lots of different, uh, you know, lots of different stuff, kind of um, around uh, around that way. But um, yeah, just interest. This is an interesting thing for me. That's a little bit different. But yeah, let's focus on actually breaking down the flavour of this beer. Talking about other stuff, but um, yeah, let's let's break down the flavour of this one then. So. The backbone of this beer, absolutely, you can feel the backbone of this beer is that roasty, toasty, kind of well-fired bread crust in there. That goes right across the middle of your palate. On top of that as well, you're getting a nice kind of smooth brown bready element. This beer actually, from what you pick up from the aroma, this is one of these ones that kind of, that translates into the flavour quite well actually. So yeah. Toasty, slightly well fired bread crust sitting in there, nice smooth brown bready elements. Then in the middle of that, you've got a nice kind of circle where the sort of coffee beans, um, where the coffee beans um, kind of go, where the coffee beans go across it actually. So um, yeah, I certainly like I certainly like how that um, pieces together actually. But um, yeah, it really it works. It works um, quite well in that sense. The coffee bean really adds a sense of smoothness to the, the middle of the palate there. If you go to the front corners of your palate and move diagonally back, there's one or two woody undertones. And if you go to the very centre of your palate and move forward, it's got a very, it's got a little touch of a nuttiness to it also, which I can, uh, which I can certainly appreciate. But um, yeah, the coffee bean in this one is really interesting. The earthiness, I think, and the, and the flavour is a bit more prominent than it is in the aroma. Um, and I think the earthiness and the sort of slow roast in this one really shines. You do get a little touch of a floral quality off this one, but not a lot, less than you would have picked up on in the aroma. And there's a wee touch of a kind of red fruity note to the the coffee bean there. So just a little bit of a slight like figgy note or, or something. But yeah, sitting on top of the, the coffee bean, you get the kind of chocolatey and, and uh, brown sugary element. So you can feel a layer of a sort of chocolatey powder just sitting on top of that. So yeah. So yeah, on top of that kind of, as you would say, on top of that kind of, um, on top of the coffee bean thing there, um, you get that nice kind of chocolatey powdery thing. And I would say it's a sort of, you know, 60, 70% cocoa chocolate. Actually, it does have a little bit of that roasty toasty element to it as well. This beer does get a little bit more roasty and toasty the further you go into the aftertaste, which is uh, which is quite interesting. And the earthiness of the coffee shows itself a little bit more. But yeah, nice roasty toasty kind of powdery chocolate sitting on top of the coffee bean. And then in the very centre of your palate, you do get a little bit of a light sweet caramel. And as you move further out from that, it's got a little bit more of a kind of toasty element to it. And then as you reach the kind of edges of the palate, um, it, it definitely has a little bit more of a kind of biscuity element in there too, which I think is, um, which I think is great. But um, yeah, the the kind of brown sugary elements you get out of this um, are very very nice actually. But yeah, this beer it's one that kind of grows on me the more. I drink on it. I drink it. It seems to develop a little bit of a silkiness to the mouthfeel which I can certainly appreciate. But I think that description we've given in the middle third of your palate, I think that kind of covers what's going on there. The middle third of your palate is definitely the most complex part of the flavour of this beer. But um, yeah, it is um, it is very nice and very layered, but the beer does dry out and become a little bit more roasty and toasty the further you go into the, um, into the aftertaste actually. So I can certainly appreciate that about this beer for sure. But um, yeah, on the, um, how would we say, on the, um, yeah, on on the, uh, <laughs> the kind of border region, brain's not working, on the border region between middle third of your palate and back third of your palate, you do get a little bit of a kind of bready, doughy build up sort of thing, you get a little bit of that coming out, and then you get a really toasty, bread crusty, kind of grainy kind of thing over the middle of that, then on the back third of your palate, it is all about the kind of toasty, pardon me, grainy elements coming out of the beer. Sitting on top of that, sitting on top of that, you get some of the more yeasty, estery notes coming out of the beer, 
so um yeah you can feel that the 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 flavor the the back third of your palate has that nice kind of roasty toasty base to it then you get the sort of more estery you get the, a bit of the more kind of estery qualities just sitting on top of that um and um you can feel that the flavor of the beer is a bit taller on the back third of your palate and as you move further forward you can feel it just gradually condenses down then as you go into the middle third of your palate um as you go into that middle third of your palate it um yeah just everything kind of condenses together quite nicely actually so uh yeah But um, yeah, that um, that flavour component, um, that that kind of thickness of the beer, if you like, is is quite interesting for sure. But I think we've covered the kind of malty and yeasty side of the beer quite well in a sense. But let's go on to the hoppy side of things. Back corners of the palate, you do have a little touch of earthiness to this one, and that builds a good bit a good bridge between the coffee elements of the beer. But as you move further forward, it becomes a little bit herbal. Absolutely, you do get a little bit of a herbal quality out of this one. And then as you push further forward along the sides of the palate, it develops a little bit. Um, it develops a little bit of a more um, kind of floral character on the front corner of the palate. It is a little bit more floral. Then around the front curve of the tongue, it's distinctly kind of lighter and grassy in a sense. But the green component is more subtle, and you'd kind of expect that from a lower alcohol stout like this one actually that makes sense but yeah front third of your palate then let's focus on the fruity side of things so on that border region between front third and middle third of your palate again you get a little bit of a bready build up and then a toasty kind of grainy element there and the base of that front third of your palate again is a kind of you get the toasty bread crust underneath and a bit of the smoother brown bread sitting on top of that but yeah the nice um oily fruity esters sitting on top of that are are pretty cool as well so yeah But um, yeah, the fruitiness out of this beer, I think, is um, is very very nicely done. Sitting on top of that, um, yeah, sitting on top of that um, juicy kind of on top of that bread crust at the back of the front thirty part, you get a wee teeny bit of a sort of. There's a sort of, <coughs> pardon me, there's a, <coughs> a slight juicy plummy quality at the back of that um, front third of your palate. As you move further forward, it develops a little bit more of a kind of light figgy kind of thing, maybe even a little bit of a lighter sultana there. And as you go on to the kind of front half of the the um, palate there, you get a few kind of black currenty elements out of this one, and maybe just a little bit of blackberry sitting on top of it. The, the fruitiness in this beer is very kind of subtle, and it's almost a little bit dry, but yeah, fair bit of sultana, a little bit of plum, a little bit of fig. You know these kind of things for me the fruitiness i would say is a little bit different from the aroma because it's got a wee touch more juiciness to it but uh, yeah it's not overly surprising in a sense definitely mm. and you maybe when you first take the beer in you might get a little bit more of a kind of raisiny sharpness out of it which is also quite interesting but um yeah on that fruity side of things it's it works quite well so um yeah interesting interesting but uh yeah for a lighter stout actually it's got a nice it's got quite a surprising level of complexity to it but yeah definitely very light and very drinkable and on that note we should round off the review with the mouthfeel then so overall i would say that this beer it strikes me as being kind of straight in the middle of the spectrum it is a a mid-bodied beer but for me in terms of a stout it is a very light bodied stout this one quite drinkable but remember for those of you watching in the states you might disagree with that because we are spoiled in terms of big thick stouts here in Scandinavia but um, yeah the I'd say overall has quite a clean mouth feel to it very smooth in some ways as well you can feel the oats kind of smoothing the beer out a little bit in this the oatmeal kind of thing uh, the oatmeal will be what's giving it the brown bread flavors of course but yeah nice kind of light and smooth and kind of drinkable stout in terms of hoppy bitterness it says it's only 30 IBUs on the can I would have thought it was more and um, because you've got a good bit of bitterness from the coffee and a bit from the hop as well I would have thought this beer was about 50 IBUs or something but remember this is my weakest point of beer reviewing but the um the malty side of things as I say it's got a nice roasty toasty base it gets a bit smoother and then it develops a bit a bit of sweetness the further you go into the aftertaste as well but there's a little bit of a kind of juicy and um, fruity thing coming out of this beer also but um yeah i certainly like how this one goes together it gets a big thumbs up from me and uh, yeah it is 
absolutely worth um, worth trying if you get the chance. So yeah, I'm glad that we finally managed to take off um, these one of these coffee stouts from Modern Times off the box. I've been wanting to try this for a while. It certainly didn't disappoint, but quite different to what I'm used to within this style category. Absolutely. But yeah, this one was the Black House coffee stout coming in at 5.8% ABV from Modern Times Beer in Point Loma over in San Diego in California. Really interesting one this and I'm glad we got the chance to review it for you here on the channel. So um, yeah, let's round off the review there then. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Modern Times Beer. We will no doubt return to these guys at some point fairly soon. But in the meantime, try out some of their IPAs, try out this one. And if you do ever get the chance to try the Wizards and Gargoyles or Dragons and Gargoyles, whatever it is, the coffee IPA collaboration that they do with Stone Brewing, that's a beautiful, beautiful beer. And I think potentially the best one I've had from them so far. So that one is definitely worth checking out and very, very quirky if you like. But yeah, thanks again for watching. Check out my social media and I'll catch you guys very, very soon. Slange at school. Cheers and make sure you have a go at some modern times beer.